Hello everyone and a really warm welcome to this webinar to help you kickstart your exam preparation for on-demand CBE. So that's our Foundations in Accountancy and Applied Knowledge exams. My name is Lucy Moore and I am one of the Education Support Managers here at ACCA. I'm really delighted to be joined by my colleague Kritika. Kritika, apologies, Adatia, who is our Digital Education Delivery Lead. At ACCA, we have almost half a million registered students just like you working towards a career that will take you to amazing places. We pride ourselves in offering our students the best advice, support tips, as well as the latest thinking and research. And on top of all that, we're working round the clock to make sure that our qualification remains the most relevant professional accountancy qualification in the world. We've got a really busy agenda today, so I'd like to get started. And to begin with, um, I'm going to go over some housekeeping points. Um, so, for, well, firstly, the purpose of this webinar is to provide you with practical guidance and showcase the resources that will help you to kickstart your exam prep for these on-demand CBEs, which, as we said on the previous slide, means the applied knowledge exams and also the foundations in accountancy ones. We're going to be talking about our ACCAX courses too, and giving you the opportunity to claim a token for one of these courses worth $119. So that's a fantastic opportunity for you. Before we get started on the main content of the webinar, we do usually just run through a few housekeeping items. So at the bottom of your screens, you'll see that there are several icons you can use. There's a help icon, and this one looks like gears, and that provides you with resources you need to resolve any technical issues that you might experience throughout the session. Fingers crossed you won't, but if you do, please visit that icon. There are also icons for the slides and the media player, and you're going to need to have both of those open during the session today so that you can see the slides we're sharing with you, see our faces on the video, and we're going to be sharing a couple of short videos with you later as well. You can rearrange your screen to suit your preference, and you should be able to resize the windows as well to make them bigger if you need to. If at any point you can't hear us or you feel that the slides aren't moving along, then please try refreshing your browser. That is an easy fix, which usually solves the problem. There's a Q&A button, which you can use to submit questions to us. We've got a team working behind the scenes and we're going to do our very best to answer as many questions as possible. But please note that given the volume we usually receive in these sessions, we can't guarantee responding to everybody directly. We should have some time at the end for um, a live Q&A and hopefully we can offer responses to some of the most commonly asked questions that will be helpful to you all. There is a resource list icon and that contains um, uh, several resources that will crop up related to things that we'll mention today. But particularly, there's an interactive one-page summary of lots and lots of resources that will be referenced throughout the webinar. So rather than giving you loads of links that you might find confusing, we've condensed all of this into a, a helpful one-pager. Registering for the session means that you will receive an email tomorrow, um, which allows you to access uh, an on-demand version of the webinar. So don't worry if you miss something or if you do have a technical issue, because you'll be able to access the recording and re-watch whatever it is you might have missed or you want to, to visit again. And then just a reminder about um, getting free access to one of our paid ACCAX courses. Stay tuned until the end of this session to find out how to do that. There are a limited number of tokens available, and these are going to be issued on a first come, first serve basis. Um, and Critique is going to be explaining a bit more about these fantastic online courses later in the session. Right, we're going to kick off with a couple of polls, if that's OK. So we'd like you to answer these two questions that we're going to ask you next. That will give us a better idea of, of you, where you are in your journey so far. So the first poll question we have here is we're trying to find out whether you've previously sat um, an ACCA exam, a, a foundations in accountancy or an applied knowledge exam, or whether it's going to be, you know, what you're planning to do is going to be your first one. So have you previously sat a foundations in accountancy or applied knowledge exam? Yes or no? I'm just going to give you a few moments to answer that. I can see how many people are responding. It would be good if we could just get a few more before we look at the results. So please do have a look. This should pop up on your screen as a poll. 
have you previously sat a foundations in accountancy or applied knowledge exam? Okay, we're reaching close to 50% of attendees having responded. So let's see what people are saying. Okay, so it's fairly even. I'm seeing it might look slightly different for you, just depending on the point at where it's captured it, but I'm seeing about 54% haven't sat an exam yet um, and close to 46% have. So that's really interesting. We've got one more poll before we kick off. Um, so have you booked your next Foundations in Accountancy or Applied Knowledge exam? So have you attended this session because you've booked something and you're, you know, you're really focusing now on how to prepare for that exam and this webinar has, has come along as something that would be useful for you? So again, I'll just give you a few moments to answer that. Have you booked your next FIA or Applied Knowledge exam? And see the total is creeping up slowly but surely. Okay, we're just about at that 50% mark again. Let's see if we can get a few more. Have you booked your next exam yet or not? Right, let's have a quick look at the results then. Okay, so there is a little bit more of a difference. I can see um, that about just over 70% of you haven't booked your next exam yet and just under 30% of you have. So that's really useful insight for us. Um, we're going to talk now about, I'm going to hand over to Kritika, she's going to take you through the exams that we're focusing on, so give you a little bit of information about them and then I'll be back to talk to you about resources that we have available. Thank you, Lucy, and uh, hello to everyone that's joining us on this webinar today. Firstly, just going to kick off with something I saw in the attendee chat, somebody asking about, is this for applied skills? Just to clarify, as Lucy mentioned in the introduction, this webinar is all about the foundations in accountancy, the FIA um, qualification and the applied knowledge, AK as it's often abbreviated. As. Now, pursuing the FIA, it's an ideal way to, to gain an understanding of how business and finance works. And it really does open up those career possibilities for you, both in finance and beyond. So if you're working in or you're interested in a finance related role, I think FIA is going to really help you with that. It's going to give you the technical knowledge that you need to perform well in your role and to advance your career. It's also going to give you a head start towards the finance and accounting qualifications, especially if you're thinking about pursuing something like the globally recognized ACCA qualification. So on this slide, what I'll be doing is taking you through the different levels of the FIA qualification. And we'll start with the level two diploma in financial and management accounting. So to obtain this diploma, you need to complete the FA1, Recording Financial Transactions, and the MA1, Management Information Exam. Next up, we've got the Level 3 Diploma in Financial and Management Accounting, and this comprises the FA2, Maintaining Financial Records, and the MA2, Managing Costs and Finance Exams. Now, please note that you don't need to complete the Level 2 Diploma in order to do the Level 3. It is absolutely okay for you to start at the Level 3 Diploma if, for instance, since you have some, some underlying knowledge. Maybe you've done an accounting A-level, maybe you've studied business and finance previously. So it's absolutely okay to start at level three, okay? Finally, we have the level four diploma in accounting and business. Now, this essentially is the first three exams of the applied knowledge stage for the full ACCA qualification. So to get this level four diploma, you will be completing financial accounting, management accounting, and the business and technology exam. So if a student is successful at level four, they're essentially exempt from sitting the applied knowledge exams 
if they choose to do the full ACCA qualification. In other words, you would start off with the applied skills level if you've completed the level four diploma in uh, accounting and business. So I should add that in order to obtain these different uh, qualifications, you do also need to complete the foundations in professionalism. Um, and, and that is something that will be a, a course available to you as soon as you register with ACCA. It can be accessed through your My ACCA account. Now, information on how you can register as a student is available on that one page of resource that Lucy mentioned earlier. OK, so that's on the resources uh, list and that's an icon that you should see at the bottom of your menu bar. And in fact, what I'm just going to do right now is I'm going to spotlight that. OK, so at your end, you should see that flashing. So do please click on that and, and explore the resources for yourself when you get a moment and information, like I say, about registering to be a student student is included in that. Now, um, I often tell my students that having a strong foundational knowledge in accountancy really does provide you with a competitive edge. And that's because the ACC exams really build upon one another. So if you've got that good base knowledge understanding, you're in a very good position to perform well and succeed in later exams. And I do think the FIA qualification helps to facilitate that. I appreciate there's a lot of information on this slide here, all of which is reiterated on our website. But once again, there is a PDF copy of this entire slide deck for you to, to look at and take away and download. So please do come back to revisit that. Now, on that note, um, I am going to hand over to Lucy. She'll cover some of the resources and then I'll be back to talk a little bit more about ACCAX. Perfect. Thanks, Kritika. Okay, so we know that studying for any exam um, can initially feel really overwhelming. You might have questions about where do you start? What should you be doing? What resources exist to support me? So in this section of the webinar, we want to highlight some of the brilliant resources that ACCA provides to help you get started. Now we're going to start by mentioning our global website. This, I think, is probably your first place to start. Um, there is a link to this in the, the summary one pager of all of our resources that you can find in the resource list. And here you'll find resources for all of the exams at the foundation level, as well as the full ACCA qualification, as you can hopefully see on the slide there. Um, we'd like to ask you another question, actually. We don't have a, a poll, but you can use the attendee chat function and type into the chat panel just to let us know if you visited our website. Um, and if you have, which resource have you looked at and which resource did you find the most useful? So I'll just give you a couple of seconds to type in the chat. Let's see if we get anything through. So have you used the ACCA website? Is it, you know, are you aware that there are resources on there? Do you go there to, to look things up? Oh, okay, so it says some new messages. Oh, brilliant. So we've got a student there saying, of course, they've visited. People mentioning the careers section, that's excellent. Someone else visiting every day, somebody saying probably not explored it enough. That's fair enough. You know, we know that there's a lot to do. Someone mentioning looking at the syllabus and technical articles. Another mention there for technical articles. Brilliant. Looks like lots of you are, are having a look at the resources, which is fantastic. A few of you saying, um, you know, maybe you could do more to explore. You're still learning what the resources are. So hopefully this section of the webinar will help give you an introduction to some of the key resources that you can be using to help prepare you for these exams um, and yeah, give you a good starting point. OK, so we'll just look a little bit more closely at what you will find if you select the exam that you are um, preparing for, you'll get this kind of list come up. OK, so it brings up a contents page that's split into a couple of different sections. Firstly, getting started and then learning and revision. So what we'd encourage you to do, first of all, is to get familiar with your exam. Have a look at an overview of the exam. This can be done by um, we've got some introductory videos available. Also, the syllabus 
document, you can also see there a link to examining team guidance. Now, this is a mixture of sometimes video content, also an examiner's approach article. This is your first hand access to members of the examining team. OK, so these are individuals that are involved in writing the exams, marking them, you know, coordinating the marking process and so on. And so you would really be missing a trick if you didn't have a look at what they've got to say and, and you know, really take that on board. OK. Um, under examining team guidance, you will also have access to the examiner reports. Now, these reports are intended to provide you with insight about technique, um, that leads to sort of successful, successfully answering the questions and the approach that you can use for certain question types. So they are really useful as well. They include detailed examiner feedback and we think that they're invaluable in, in maximising exam success. They're available for all exams and we would suggest that you have a look at at least the latest two reports that have been published. Under the learning and revision section, you have the option to access additional practice tests, which we're going to have a look at in a moment in a bit more detail, but also to attempt a free specimen exam. Now, it's really important that as part of your preparation, part of your revision, you do as much useful question practice as you can. OK, so doing questions, trying to understand how you've done in those questions, if you know you're not passing them, looking at where you having a think about where you might have gone wrong. Now, the specimen exam is a is a great tool for this. It shows you how the exam is going to be assessed and structured, and it will give you an indication of the likely style and range of questions that you could be asked. So this is basically your free access to an interface that exactly re replicates the exam environment. And we would strongly encourage you to attempt the questions in the specimen to gauge how ready you are for the exam. You can attempt them as many times as you like, and the software will also let you know whether you're answering a question correctly or incorrectly. So as I was just saying there, you know, it's important for you to pay attention to whether you're getting the questions correct or incorrect when you are doing your question practice. And if you are getting them incorrect, reflect on why that might be. OK, we're going to have a look now at our Student Study Resources YouTube channel. We know that for many students, video is their preferred medium of consuming information. I think I don't think anyone can really av avoid video content now. I know for me, I certainly watch videos to learn. Um, I I love looking at videos of, you know, quick recipes to cook. I was actually looking at a video just yesterday of how to um, disconnect a washing machine, of all things. But, you know, they're really, really useful short videos to, to help you upskill on something. And that power of video learning has led us to set up our own YouTube channel, this Student Study Resources YouTube channel, where we have a host of curated videos and also an archive of webinar content. We'd really encourage you to subscribe to this channel, explore it. It's really easy to navigate. It's been arranged into playlists that reflect the ACCA exam structure particularly useful for those students taking the level four diploma or the applied knowledge exams, we have a video debrief for every single question in each of those specimens that I've mentioned earlier. So if you were to do um, attempt the specimen, do a question, get it wrong, you know that there's a video that you can go to to debrief that question and, and that should give you a clue as to perhaps where you have made a mistake. Okay. Moving on, practice tests that I mentioned a moment ago. So we talked about the specimen exams and access to those question debriefs that go alongside the specimen. If you're looking for further question practice, we have these practice tests available for you. So as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. And that is embedded in the name of this resource. So like the specimen exams, they simulate the real exam environment, allowing you to get familiar with that software, with the interface of the exam before you sit the real thing. They are available to purchase at a marginal cost for all of the FIA and applied knowledge exams. 
when you complete a practice test, you receive a score, but more importantly, you also received a personalized feedback diagram, which shows you how you've performed across the syllabus. So you can use that diagram for a quick view of what your strengths and weaknesses are, and that will help you plan your revision before taking a real exam. The more questions you practice and the more familiar you become with the exam format, the more likely you are to perform better in the exams. And our data insights reveal that students who use our practice tests are more likely to pass the exam and they tend to score more highly as well. OK, we're going to mention another couple of resources before um, we move on to think about approved learning partners. So we have got some support available to you in the form of podcasts. And we know that's something else that is a it's quite a popular way of engaging with support as well as videos. We also have a learning community which gives you the opportunity to connect with other learners doing the same thing as you. So thinking about the podcasts, our aim is to reach students with really useful, timely, inspirational and engaging content on a whole variety of topics and our podcasts cover topics ranging from getting back on track after an exam setback to guidance on preparing for remotely invigilated exams. Last year we recorded a podcast episode all about the applied knowledge exams and this would also be relevant for any of you who are studying the level four diploma. We've linked to the podcasts on the summary one pager that's in the resource list for this webinar. So please do check that out. And then again, just on the learning community, we really we do understand that, um, you know, a lot of you are studying on your own and being able to connect with other individuals who are going through the same thing as you is incredibly important. So the student learning community gives you that chance to connect, share your ideas and thoughts, ask questions of your fellow students. Um, we feel there are some huge benefits to, to being part of that community. And we hope that you could feel comforted and supported um, by the connections that you could develop on that channel. OK, so we're just going to finish off this section by looking at our approved learning partners. Now, our data reveals that students who study with an approved learning partner perform much better in their exams. And we continually assess our partner's course delivery so that you can be confident in the quality of the tuition that you're going to receive. There are a really wide range of flexible face to face and also online tuition options available. So whatever your personal circumstances, there should be an option to suit you. And you can learn more about our approved learning partners by checking out the information on our website. Again, this is linked to in the one pager summary document, which is under our resource list icon. So in a moment, I'm going to be um, handing back to Kritika, who is going to talk to you in more detail about our ACCAX courses. But before we go back to Kritika, I'm going to play a short video for you in which you're going to hear from some students who've used an approved learning partner. OK. If I hadn't studied with a learning provider, I would definitely have not gotten the mark I got because they give you the best tips and advice on how to pass. It's very, very important for you to study with a proof learning provider because that will help you and that will make the job a little bit easier for you. Self-studying didn't work for me. I would um, really recommend students go through an approved learning provider. Rather than going to a, a tutor, I do it all online and, and that seems to work for me. It gives me the flexibility to learn in my own time. Um, I chose to do face to face over online um, simply because it works for me better. It's easy, you've got someone there if you need to ask questions. You're not on your own doing it that way. My advice would be don't do it alone. Register with the learning provider so they can guide you and make your journey as easy as possible for you to pass the exam.
brilliant. So I hope you found that useful. Um, listening to to those students, you could you can see that they were doing their studies in a variety of different ways. Some of them online, some of them face to face. So please do have a look at our um, information about approved learning partners and see if it might be an option for you. Okay, Kritika, back to you. Thank you, Lucy. Some great resources there um, and definitely worthwhile checking out. And just speaking of approved learning partners, if you are looking for high quality e-learning for your foundations and accountancy or the applied knowledge level exams, then ACCAX might just be the product for you. So what is ACCAX? Well, ACCAX is a suite of seven flexible, affordable and engaging online courses and these are offered by ACCA. So like I say, they're geared towards the foundational level of accountancy. So earlier we went through the slide with the courses or the exams that make up the FIA qualification and I will cover exactly those courses again in the, in the next slide. Now the beauty of our ACCAX courses is that you do get to join a global community of learners and our learners really do benefit from the connections and the interactions that they have on our very active discussion forums. We do also have a really dedicated team who are committed to helping you through that learning journey. You know, whether this is the presence that we have on the discussion forums and answering your questions or the updates that we make to our live virtual notice board or even the email comms that we do regularly share with you, as well as our useful course handouts. We know that students that come on and enroll into our ACCX courses are getting a real wealth of support resources that helps to enhance their learning experience. Now, finally, all our courses are available on demand. Now, what that means is that you really can study and learn at a pace that suits you. So if you're somebody that's working full time, maybe you've got family commitments, rest assured that ACCAX will help you to manage your time. You can work during your working hours and maybe spend a couple of hours in the evening working through the course. So that flexibility we know is something that our students really appreciate. Appreciate. The other thing to mention is that when you do enroll into our ACCX courses, you have access to them for 12 months. Okay, so you can revisit the course as many times as you like to recap, reinforce your understanding. And I think that's particularly beneficial when it comes on to the revision stage. You can go back and revisit a unit or a lesson that you might not have understood as well. Now, on to the next slide, I'm just going to cover the courses that um, ACCAX offers. So, seven courses are offered all together, and four of our courses are free, absolutely free for anyone to enroll onto. You can do that immediately after this, uh, this webinar if you want to as well. So, what are the free courses that we have on offer? Well, we offer the Introduction to Bookkeeping and the Introduction to Management Accounting, the FA1 and the MA1 course. Now, all the content that you do see within our ACCAX courses are aligned with the syllabus learning outcomes for the respective ACCA FIA exam. So if you come on to the Introduction to Bookkeeping course, you can rest assured that you're getting all the technical content that you need, as well as all that question practice to help you get that exam success for the respective FA1 exam. So that's your, your level, uh, level two courses. Your level three courses are also free. So that's FA2 and MA2. That's intermediate bookkeeping and intermediate management accounting. Now, remember earlier I said there's no real prerequisite knowledge that's required to study accountancy. So uh, if, for instance, you are thinking about, right, I want to start at level four, um, you could, if you wanted to, dip into our free FA1 and FA2 course just to brush up on some of that technical knowledge that might then help you for financial accounting, which is our level four diploma course. So that would be absolutely possible. 
We offer the applied knowledge stage courses or the level four diploma courses as well. This comprises financial accounting, management accounting and business and technology. Now, normally these courses do come at a cost. So $119 per course. However, for those of you that are listening into this webinar, you have the opportunity to sign up to these courses for free. Okay, and the way to go about getting that free access is to complete the form that we've added to the resources list of this webinar. Now, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to spotlight that within the um, within sort of your menu. So it should be flashing at your end. I'm highlighting that right now. If you click on the MS form, there is a form that you need to fill in with some very basic details about yourself, your email, and the course that you would like to get a token for, and that will give you free access to the course. Uh, Lucy mentioned earlier, there's only limited availability for these tokens. will follow up with you with the details that you've provided to give you more instructions about how you can access those courses. Now, obviously, as someone that works very closely to this product, I am going to be singing its praises, but very shortly, I will also be showing you a video uh, testimonial from students that have uh, covered and worked through the ACCX courses and passed the respective exams. So before I actually move on to show you uh, that video, I want to ask you guys a bit of a question. So based on what I've just said, um, what percentage of ACCX students do you think pass their exams first time around? So a student works through all the content, perspective exam, they pass. How? What, what do you think that percentage of students is? And obviously, this isn't a poll question. You're going to need to use either the attendee chat or the q and I will be um, seeing the, the, the percentages coming through. If you could type that in. I will then reveal the answer. So take a guess, there's no right or wrong here, but what percentage of ACCX students pass the exams first time around? And whilst we're waiting, I will just give you a bit of a, maybe a bit of a clue. So we had a student that covered our financial accounting course, passed that with an incredible 94%. Recently, and actually just this week, had also sent us a message having completed management accounting and scored 92%. We were super proud of him. He's also completed our business and technology course as well. Oh, loads of percentages coming through from some of you in the chat. So I'm getting 70s. Okay, pretty impressive. Somebody saying 20. Okay, that's pretty low. 50s, we're seeing, oh, somebody saying 85, 95 as well from Christine. Thank you so much for your contribution there. I can reveal that in terms of the pass rate that we get for our ACCAX students, first time pass rate, it's an incredible 86%. Okay, that's a lot of students passing first time round. Um, and that's a statistic that we are really proud of. And what we also notice is that students that do come on to study through our ACCX courses often get a pass mark that tends to be higher than the global averages as well. You can dip in to find out what those global averages are because they're always stated on our websites. So if you go onto our website and you select a particular exam that you're working towards MA1, FA1, whatever, you will see at the bottom there's usually a bar graph that shows what the pass rates have been over the last few sittings. Okay, and we tend to find that with our ACCX learners, uh, the pass rate is very high. And like I say, first time pass rate, 86%. We know that students perform well at uh, with our ACCX courses because thinking about just the way the courses are arranged and organized, not only do we have the technical content, but there is lots of opportunity for that question practice. And that question practice comes in the form of questions that we have at the end of each section to reinforce your learning about the content within a section. But also, we've got a dedicated revision section as well. And what that revision section does, it really pulls together all the information that you would have covered through that course, giving you question practice that replicates the style and structure of what you might see in the real exam.
Now, earlier, Lucy mentioned about the practice tests, and I saw a couple of you mention in the attendee chat, wow, this, that, that's really cool, definitely going to be signing up for this. What I will say is that if you enroll onto our ACCAX courses, you get free access to those practice tests, which are normally chargeable, a very nominal fee. But if you're an ACCAX student, in addition to the question practice within our revision section on the course itself, you also get access to the practice test. OK, uh, and again, these practice tests, they simulate that exam environment, as Lucy was mentioning earlier. And that's the thing that you want to make sure you do when you're sitting and working towards these exams. We cannot stress enough that practice is key. OK, so you want to make sure that you're getting in that practice. Practice tests are the best way to do that. But our X courses also within the courses offer lots of opportunity for it. Now, earlier I mentioned that with the FIA qualification as well, you know, they provide a good foundation. All the exams at ACCA build upon one another. Uh, and I think with, with the ACCAX courses, it gives you the opportunity to do that. If you are even studying, let's say, you know, an applied skills exam or one of the applied knowledge exams, you could dip into the free courses as well just to brush up on your knowledge. You know, I often describe this entire process of doing your exam is building a house. If you've got that solid foundation, your house is going to stay upright, okay? And it's very much the same thing when it comes to doing these exams. So give yourself the opportunity to build that solid foundation. So like I say, really, uh, really happy with the strong pass rates that we uh, we get. I'm obviously singing its praises because I'm very passionate about this product. But what I want to do now is show you uh, a video testimonial that we put together from real students that have studied our courses and passed. Okay, so you're not just taking our word for it. So I'm going to click on to the video. Hi, my name is Hussein Ali. I am from Afghanistan. I took SCCAX course on foundation and bookkeeping. My name is Joshua Ojubile. I'm from Nigeria. Hi, my name is Gillian and I am interested in pursuing the ACC qualification. I have no accountancy background and I thought ACCAX would be the perfect place to start. I am Michael Aluma, an ACCA student in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm enrolled on intermediate bookkeeping and intermediate management accounting. My favorite thing about the SSEX courses are that they are very interactively designed. The course is very engaging. You feel like sitting in a real class. My favorite thing about ACCA X is the summary note. I also love the way the course content is fully matched with the syllabus. Everything on the course is directly relevant to the exams I'll be taking, so no effort is wasted. Study material is easy to understand, it's easy to grasp a topic after watching a video and best of all, the graded and ungraded questions really come in handy when it comes to determining if you've grasped the topic. It is flexible, it allows me to merge my job with schooling. My top tip for new ACCAX learners is to study regularly, a little at a time, rather than rush through the course when things pile up. Take your time to read the content and try to study a bit every day. Practice as much you can practice. Take the practice tests available in the ACCAX courses. Don't think ACCAX is hard. It is self-explanatory and don't procrastinate. Start now. ACCAX is helping me get a thorough understanding of the basics. I hope to build on this solid foundation as I pursue my desire to become a qualified accountant someday soon.
Right. Well, I hope you guys were motivated by all the lovely words that our students had to say about X. And I just want to, Lucy, before I hand over to you, um, touch on a couple of comments that have come through on the chat. So some of you saying you're not able to see the token link. So I've just pasted that on the attendee chat. So you should see it pop up your end. Please do use that link to fill in your details. Um, another question, a student just asking on the attendee chat, if I've not started doing the FIA, do I really uh, need to do the ACCAX. So just, just to clarify, the ACCAX courses offer you the tuition, if you will, if you are working towards FIA. Now, if you haven't made the decision yet about whether or not to do FIA, actually, I think the ACCAX courses could be great because you could sign up to our free course and just dip your toes into the world of accounting to determine if this is what you want to do. And more often than not, what we find is that our students will start an FIA FA1 course, for instance, and they'll enjoy it and then end up wanting to pursue the qualification because they really did find it quite enjoyable. So um, do just bear that in mind. ACCAX offers the tuition, which will help you towards your FIA exam. Brilliant. On that note, Lucy, over to you to, to wrap up. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Kritika. Okay. Now we know that um, we've thrown a lot of information at you over the last kind of 30 or 40 minutes. We're very aware of that. So we wanted to just try to, um, I don't know, focus in on some of some of the concrete next steps that you can take to really kickstart your exam preparation. And that is based on on some of the things that we've said today, but really trying to to simplify it for you. OK, so firstly, planning. Planning is extremely important when it comes to exam success. So having a study schedule that works for you, that's realistic, that you can work towards is immense, okay? We can't really kind of overemphasize um, how much that can help you. We have a tool called Compass that is available that can help you plan, and um, come up with a study plan for your applied knowledge exams, okay? So that's linked to on the, um, one page of summary of resources that we have in the resource list. Right, next, after you've got a study plan, we would really encourage you to explore the resources. We've touched on some of those key ones today. You've got the resource finder on the ACCA global website. There's also a link to uh, quite a new on-demand CBE hub, and we, we've provided um, you with the link to that as well. And that will signpost, again, some of those absolute must-use resources that you should be taking advantage of in your exam preparation. And please do, we've mentioned it a number of times, but the resources section of this webinar, please have a look at what's in there. Make sure that you download this one pager because that can act as your signpost to everything else that you need. Okay, next we've talked about being part of a community and how supportive that can be. Okay, so we mentioned the learning community. Critica, I know that if a student joins up to, to an ACCAX course, they will also have access to the community of students who are on that course with them. Okay, so there's two possibilities there. Your next next step is to fill in this, this form that we've shared with you that Critica has mentioned to be in with a chance of um, getting free access to an ACCAX course. Okay, so we really encourage you to do that. And then last but not least, book your exam. This links, for me, this links back to planning, having a goal to work towards that you know you've committed to is really, really helpful when it comes to kind of motivating you, helping you prep, helping you plan. If you haven't booked yet, it's just all too easy to put things off and, and you know, it's all a bit fluffy and you don't really feel like you're working towards anything concrete. So please do book your exam. We'd just like to mention um, another next step, which is something that we've um, scheduled into our calendar of events fairly recently. So we've got another really useful webinar coming up for you. It's on Tuesday, the 14th of February. That will be taking place at 1 p.m. GMT. It's being led by our expert tutor, Joe Tuffill. And it covers the skills and techniques that you need to succeed in the on-demand CBEs. OK, so she'll do a quick recap of, of some of the resources, putting her slant on them as a tutor. 
And um, the, the main focus of the webinar is looking at some of the question types that you will come across in these exams. And she's going to give you tips and advice for tackling those question types, okay? Some of the techniques that you can use. So please do sign up for that. There is a registration link again in the um, resource list of this webinar. Okay, so that covers everything that we really wanted to, to do in terms of, you know, sharing information with you, broadcasting that information to you. We'd like to make it a little bit more interactive now and make sure that we are tackling some of your questions. Okay, so I know that we've had our colleague Hassan answering questions in the background. He's got through an incredible number of questions. So huge thanks to, to Hassan for doing that. We've put some aside that we thought would be really useful um, to share more widely. Um, Kritika, mm -hmm. could I ask, but start, sorry, by asking you a couple of those questions? Is that okay? Yes, yeah, sure. Lucy, I just want to come back to something I'm noticing just as, as common questions in the, the attendee chat. A lot of you asking about the tokens, just to reiterate that the, the tokens will only be allocated to, uh, you know, those that are selected. Now, like I said, there's limited availability, so you need to use the form to fill in your details initially. And if you're selected, rest assured, you will be sent more instructions about the deadline for the token, how to claim it with some detailed instructions. So your first step is to click on the form, fill in your details if you'd like to get access to the tokens. And then if you're selected, our team will send you more information about it. So hopefully that does tick off the, the questions that we're seeing coming through in the chat. And also I have added in the chat a link to the ACCA X webpage within our ACCA global website. So you can find out more information about it there if you want to before deciding to fill in your details in the form just to get a feel a bit for you know the courses as well. Um, so please do check that out. So uh, yeah, sorry, Lucy, just wanted to come to tick off those questions first. No problem. Yeah, I can see lots of those um, in the Q&A. So hopefully that's that's clear now. So moving on from the tokens and just to, to look at some questions in some slightly different areas. Um, a couple which are sort of related, I think. So firstly, do I need to be good at maths to do accountancy? And a related question, I think, really, is how difficult is it for a non-accounting student to pursue FIA or ACCA? What would you say yeah. to that critique? That's a great question. And I think I might have seen somebody mention it also in the chat. Now, rest assured that if you're coming into this without any sort of prior accounting knowledge and worrying about your math skills, because I think there's a real misconception that accounting is just boshing out numbers, lots of Excel spreadsheets. And I can tell you it definitely isn't. I have been an accountant myself. I've gone through and I say I've been an accountant. I still have the credentials. It's just I've moved into education of it. But accounting isn't just numbers. Yes, you're going to need the basic math skills like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. But hey, that's probably something you've already covered through high school. OK, and it's not going to be as complex as something like trigonometry or Pythagoras's theorem. I mean, it really won't be that that intense. Now, if you're thinking maybe I do need to brush up on math skills, well, we do have the Student Virtual Learning Center, which does comprise some basic math skills to just test your abilities. Now, that's something that Lucy mentioned. We've got a one page of resource um, summary. It's actually linked out in that. So if you want, you could also dip into that. So the short answer is to the question, do I need to be good at math? No, you really don't. OK, a lot of finance and accounting is about using numbers to make strategic decisions. OK, so uh, you'll be absolutely fine if you've just got the basic mathematical skills. And with with as you progress through the courses as well, you'll be picking up some of the additional mathematical skills that you might need. But like I say, it's not going to be as complex as trigonometry. To your point about, you know, what if I'm somebody that hasn't covered accounting before and I'm totally new to this? But what I will say about that is after I qualified, I then moved into the education sector and I was teaching students, uh, you know, accounting modules for those that were studying towards their professional qualifications. And what I would often notice when I was in my classes is that a lot of students 
did not have accounting backgrounds. A lot of them did an art degree or a history or an English degree, and they were doing well in accounting. Okay, so again, please be comforted by knowing that there are students that come into accounting as a field, as a profession that they want to pursue, not having had any background in business or finance. You know, and, way, and the way the qualification is designed is to enable you to really get those basics, that foundational knowledge, which is why I mentioned you know, FIA can be great for that, and you just build on it, okay? It, I, it's not going to be rocket science, I can tell you that, okay, having been through the process myself. So hopefully that does help Lucy address those questions um, that you've just uh, directed my way. <laughs> Perfect. But there are another couple of questions which I think, again, it would be great to put to you just thinking mm -hmm. about your experience as a tutor, if that would mm -hmm, be okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sure. um, here we have a student saying they're stuck on FA1. They just can't seem to pass that exam. Mm. They're enjoying everything that they're learning, um, but kind mm -hmm. of wondering what they can do to move on. Should they give up? What's your advice for students who are struggling? Oh, that's a, again, that's that's probably one that a lot of students are probably, you know, sort of thinking, if I fail, should I give up? And actually, you know, if you're enjoying it, it's something I would say you should stick with. You know, I know I mentioned the first time pass rate for our ACCAX students was 86%, but that still means 14% aren't getting through the first time. And that's a pretty substantial percentage when we do think about the volume of students we get. And and if you're one of those students that's thinking, I didn't pass FA1 the first time round, but I am enjoying it, what I would say is please do persevere with it because sometimes it's not that you haven't understood the concepts or the technical knowledge. It could just be the way the question's being asked. And Lucy, I often find that students, when they come on to this qualification, it, it, they struggle perhaps, or the challenge rather, is the exam technique. And once you can get your head around that and the way that the AC CCA examiner is asking you the question, then you're on to a win. So how do we achieve that? How do we how do we get the right exam technique? Well, it comes back to the point we made earlier, it's practice, okay? And so what you need to do and what you need to reflect on is, am I going into this exam having practiced as many questions as I possibly can? And what that means is, have you done the specimen exam questions? Have you done the practice test questions? Have you been studying with an approved learning provider or have you used ACCAX and used all the question practice within those courses? Because if you can then answer yes to that and you walk into the exam, I can, I can say with confidence you're probably going to perform a lot better. So it might be that you haven't performed to your potential simply because of that practice component missing. Now, Lucy earlier mentioned examiner reports, didn't she, when we were covering the resources. Now, at FA1, there are examiner reports that are available. Okay, and what you might want to do is dip into those because what the examiner does is they'll cover some of the sort of challenging topic areas and they'll dissect where students have gone wrong or, or, or what they should be focusing on. So I would encourage that you do take out some time to also look at the examiner reports for FA1. That might help you. Okay, it might give you a bit of a heads up as to where you might have made a mistake. So do take the opportunity to reflect. Please don't be disheartened by by failing, okay? Um, failure, I often say, is is uh, something that you need to experience. It's a learning. It's a learning opportunity. You need to change your perspective about it. And actually, if you listen to the the Instagram episode that I did with Isabel, was it just last week? I plugged Steve Bartlett's podcast, where I was like, actually, he always interviews people that have failed it in some way or another, have faced some adversity. And the best thing is to shift your perspective. So shift your perspective about that failure. You're enjoying the course, so stick with it. That's what I would say. Brilliant. Thanks, Kritika. Really wise advice there, I think. Um, looking at some of the other questions we've got now, we've got this question that I know comes up quite a lot, and that is asking whether there's a deadline to book these exams. Mm. So these exams are on demand. Um, so they don't work in the same way as our, our, you know, four sessions a year and then associated um, entry deadlines and so on. It doesn't work in quite that way. Is there anything else you would want to add to that critique? 
No, not. I mean, just to sort of echo the point you've made, these exams are on demand, but there is a risk that because they're on demand, you then don't actually, you just put it off booking the exam. And was it earlier, uh, the statistic, I think you displayed with 71% of you hadn't booked, then that's fine. Mm. You might just be thinking, well, I want to dip into a bit of the technical content and then decide to book. That's totally fine. But what I would say is that, you know, put, put, put a plan in place so that you do book at some point, because the more you put it off, the, the likely it is that, you know, you're just going to delay it and delay it. And then, you know, you're not going to have the motivation to actually study. And I often think just getting that date in the diary can be the best motivation. Get your butting gear to make sure you work towards that exam date. So uh, that's what I would say to that. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Kritika. Right. We've got a great um, ACCX question here. So this is a okay. student <laughs> saying they've already passed um, BT, MA and FA, actually, but wondering whether ACCAX would be useful to them for a recap? I would say 100% yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, the, the thing I would say is that the ACCAX courses are also great as a refresher. You know, I think I saw a question about exemptions earlier as well. And if you're somebody that's had an exemption, I think the ACCAX courses can be great. For, for, for just bridging any knowledge gaps that you might have. You can use the courses as an opportunity to dip into, let's say, financial accounting, to brush up on double entry, consolidation, before you do financial reporting, let's say. And you can fill in your details in the form. And if you're selected, you could use your token to actually, you know, enroll on to, to MA, FA or BT. You, you can absolutely use our courses for that. And don't forget, we already have four free courses. And, you know, FA, FA1 intro to bookkeeping or FA2 intermediate bookkeeping, it does kind of reinforce some of the content that's also in financial accounting and that you will see again in financial reporting and even SBR. So, you know, our X courses are really great uh, for, for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. We have a question here asking how frequently we'd recommend students do practice questions when they're actually still at the stage of learning you know the content learning the knowledge mm. they need um i'll ask you to add add to this in a moment but i mean i would say that question practice is something that you build up gradually so you want to be building up to a point you know relatively close to the exam during your final revision where you are definitely doing um two to three full mock exams but you you need to build up to that by just starting to do questions to see how you're getting on with them um, and maybe sometimes not exam standard questions at first as you're still learning the content but building up to that would you agree with that Kritika? Yeah, absolutely, Lucy. I think you've put it really nicely that, you know, you want to start off by perhaps just doing questions that aren't quite exam standard. If you're wondering, well, how do I do that? Or how do I get access to it? Again, you know, when we just think about the way our courses for ACCAX are designed, you know, each of our units do include what we call, you know, applied learning activities. And these kind of get you um, brushing up on whatever content it is that a particular unit covers. And they're not necessarily exam standard, but where you using it as an opportunity to just make sure you're reinforcing your learning by applying it. You know, it's like if you were taking a driving test or you were thinking about a driving exam, well, you need to get in the car and start driving, if, even if you were a terrible driver to start with. I mean, I failed my driving test multiple times. I'll be honest about that. But I had to start. I had to get in the car. I had to start driving. I had to do something about it. And it's very much the same thing here. You know, when you do start doing the question practice, don't be disheartened if you're getting a question wrong. It's absolutely okay. This isn't the real exam when you're doing a question at home. So see it as a learning opportunity. If you get a question wrong, learn from it. Okay, find out where did I go wrong? Why didn't I get it right? And that's the key to a successful student, you know, being able to learn from that mistake and then applying it when you do come on to doing the mock exams as Lucy sort of suggested. So that's what I would uh, say to that, really just echoing the points that Lucy has made. Brilliant. Thanks, Kritika. Now, we're almost out of time. There are another couple of questions that I've been looking at, and I think that actually answering those questions will be a nice way to round off the session. So one question mm -hmm. is, is, is quite general. It's saying, please let me know um, 
what are the mandatory things to study before the exam so they don't mention a, a particular exam um, and then another student asking for some helpful tips for MA now what I think I would do is just kind of reiterate what we've covered in this webinar so you need to get started by familiarizing yourself with the exam that, that you're planning to take and we've got some introductory resources that can help you do that you're then going to need to learn the content and we've got various options available to you there so approved learning partners can support you in doing that there's the ACCAX courses that critique has talked about and then of course there's the there's the practice side of it so question practice and we've we've run through some resources that um you know several resources that we have available to support you in that area okay so kind of really breaking it down into starting off by understanding what the exam is asking of you what you know approach it takes and that kind of thing learning the knowledge and practicing anything you'd like to add to that Kritika? no brilliant i think you've covered it spot on lucy um yeah fantastic i, th I just want to say make sure you do explore the resources as, as you know lucy has kind of outlined through her segment and we've been touching on throughout um and as we mentioned earlier as well try think about booking that exam so you have that in the diary and you have something to, to work towards. Also, thank you for some of the nice comments coming through in the chat and for all your questions as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody. That brings the session to a close. We really hope you found it useful. Um, and remember that you'll get an email tomorrow with details of how you can listen to the, this again, just in case you want to, to revisit anything. You can pass them on to any friends that you think might be interested in listening in as well. Um, thanks. To Kritika, thanks for the to the team behind the scenes. We've got um, our producer Michelle and also Hassan, who's been helping us answer the questions. So huge thanks, and thanks to everyone for joining, and for all your participation in the polls, on the attendee chats, and everything. We really hope um, that you're excited about your your ACCA journey, and that you're going to book your exam and, and get prepared using all the advice we've shared. Okay, thanks everyone, and bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>